Steve here, hope you're doing well. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, for this video I'm going to be looking at what you can learn if you're just getting into math rock and you're looking for something that like epitomizes the entire thing, which is very difficult to do with math rock, mind you. This riff is from a song called Melody 4 by the wonderful band Terra Melos. And this is one of the first things that I learned that was quite complicated, but actually to me was signified what math rock was, all of the odd time signatures and just angular riffs and just something that really broke the boundaries of what I was learning on guitar at the time. I did a cover of this many years ago and I've alluded to this in an earlier video but actually Yovet Younger was down in the comments all those years ago commenting on this video which is really cool to see and uh, I've got a very gormless face throughout this video but oh what the hell eh? That's what happens when you're trying to do something quite complicated. So yeah, even though this riff sounds quite complicated, uh, I'm going to break it down with you today using Guitar Pro. So I c we can go through it a bit together. And we're not going to do the whole thing, I just want to do this first two, these first two cycles. And if you're interested in learning the rest, then the tab will be available down below in the description. If we jump over to Guitar Pro here, we can actually highlight parts of the riff. And this bit's in 4 4, the first two measures, which sounds like this. And um, yeah, it sounds quite complicated, but the wonderful thing about Guitar Pro is that we can slow this down. So I'm going to take it down to about 70. And we can also highlight parts to loop as well, so like this. And this is what I recommend you do for when you're trying to learn something complex anyway, is to break something down into even, either do it bar by bar, or you can break the riff down into little parts like I've, I'm going to do here. So this sounds like so. So I'd see that as a complete phrase there. And you need to think about your, the positioning of your hand as well. So I'm starting from a little finger here. It's easier than doing something like that, right? And then sliding up with my little finger here too. going to lift up there. Okay, and then we have the second part of this bar. So we're going to start with my index finger here and we're going to slide up. Okay, think about the fingering. So, slide up little finger and then this leaves our um, ring finger here underneath to switch easily to get that hammer off uh, pull off sorry once you're comfortable with those two riffs we can try and sandwich them together so I'm going to take this a little bit slower so I'm going to take it down to 60% of speed And then uh, I would attempt this next bar again by breaking it into two. I'm going to keep it at 60% speed because I think that would be better for you. And again, I see this. And again, I see this as two different parts we can learn. I need to think of that the finger positions again. Luckily there's a lot of legato so it makes things easier than having to pick every note. And then we have this little variation of the same thing. This whole riff even though it's in 4-4 four, four, sounds quite odd because it comes on the, you know, the offbeat. It's not starting on the 1 here, it's actually starting, you can see, on the 1-E. Uh, the t the three e of this bar, and the same goes for here as well. Like it comes on, it comes on an odd beat. That's what makes it sound so odd, even though it's in four four. So now I, I'd glue that bar all together. And uh, I'd, I'd really implore you to go at the speed that you're comfortable with. You know, I know this riff already, that's why I can dive into it this quickly, so don't feel like you should be at that level straight away. And um, 
you can see the rest of the tab here, you know, it goes on quite a bit until it gets to the next part of the song. It's a lovely piece to learn. And once you've got this part nailed, you'll find that it's not really that difficult to go on and do the rest of it because it's just variations of the same thing. You know, slightly different theme, but um, all of the kind of the ideas are quite similar. But like I said, I really was drawn to this riff because it just, one, it sounds really cool, but it really broke that conventional kind of playing that I was doing at the time. I was doing a lot of like, you know, just like your regular power chords and rock riffs kind of thing. So I really wanted something that would like break out of that, but also, you know, was not too difficult to learn. You can also play this riff as finger tapping and it does sound like it's finger tapped on the record, but I could be wrong. All right, so uh, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, then please leave them down below in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. I really recommend going and checking out all of Terra Malice's back catalogue because it's absolutely fantastic. And if you have any recommendations of what other riffs we could learn to get into math rock, then please leave them below. I chose this one as well because it's in standard tuning, so we don't even have to tune, change the tuning of our guitar, which is always, uh, always welcome, right? So. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and if you're interested in learning more about math rock, I do have an ebook that I made, and there's a link for that down below in the description. And uh, I'd like to say thanks to all of the Patreons for supporting the channel, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye!